Oh cool, friends of Mineral Town. Hey everybody, Peebs here! A lot of you probably know that I'm a big Harvest Moon fan. I've done a lot of videos on the games, and I take just about any opportunity possible to talk about them. But what most of you probably don't know is that I actually met my wife because of the games. I did a top five Harvest Moon games a long time ago, and my wife saw it, emailed me, we started talking, and uh, we just sort of never stopped. Apparently she saw this face and was like, yeah, yeah. So as weird as it is to think about, my life would be significantly different if it weren't for Harvest Moon, and the game that initially got me hooked was the Game Boy Advance version, Friends of Mineral Town. It not only means a lot to me on a personal level, it's also just one of my favorite games of all time in general. So when I saw that it was being re-released on the Switch as Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town, naturally I was really excited. And fortunately, since I dedicated my life to becoming an epic farm gamer. I've apparently earned the right, nay the privilege, of an early access review code, thanks to XC. And since I got it early and I've been playing it a lot, I figured maybe I could make a video about it. I mean, it's kind of my job. I, 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 could, I could do my job for once. It, that'd, prob that'd probably be a good idea, you know, like upload a video to YouTube. What a, what a concept, right? But in all seriousness, I'm really excited. Let's go ahead and play. Start the game, pick which little goober you want to be, and then give them a name. I was going to go with Pumberton, but it was one letter too long, so I guess Pumberto or Pumberto will have to do. As a child, Pumberto visited his grandpa's farm for vacation. It was a lovely summer filled with memories and treasures. Fast forward to the future, and now we're a fully grown adult goober. And we've inherited our grandpa's farm now that he's passed away. I feel like I have to mention the mayor's compensation hat here. I just want to pick him up and place him on a Monopoly board. Screw you, Thimble. You're going down. Tomorrow, our new life as a farmer begins. Oh, man. I can't wait for tomorrow. Still, ex I'm still excited. Before we go any further, I should probably address the elephant in the room. Why is the game called Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town, instead of Harvest Moon? Well, I'll try to keep it brief, but basically... Marvelous developed all the Harvest Moon games back in the day, but they were published and translated in the US by Natsume. Or excuse me, Natsume. They misspelled their own name on the title of the Harvest Moon 64. I, it's not relevant to uh, what I'm saying, I just wanted to point it out to you. Natsume! <laughs> Everything was going just fine until eventually divorce or something like that Marvelous retained all the rights to the games themselves But the actual title Harvest Moon for one reason or another was owned by Natsume So Marvelous continued making new games under the title Story of Seasons with the new publisher Xseed And Natsume started making some of their own games that were called Harvest Moon But I mean the other ones were the originals and this one's the these are these are just called ha Harvest Moon So that's my very simplified and fairly uninformed uh, explanation on how why Harvest Moon is now called Story of Seasons Or why this game is called Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral, Friends of Mineral Town is our Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town. People kept asking me to make a video about that, but it sounded like a long, boring essay, and maybe I'd have to do a lot of research, and I didn't really want to do research. I'd rather do... <laughs> That's more my style, really. It fits, it, fits my, it fits my expertise a little bit better. So yeah, let's get back into the video in now. The main goal in Friends of Mineral Town, as is the case in most Harvest Moon and Story of Seasons games, is to build a successful farm. And unfortunately, you have quite a long ways to go. Your grandpa may have only died recently, but he can't have been doing very well for some time because, uh, this place is a complete disaster. Welcome to Pumberto Fields. You want rocks? We've got them. Please buy our rocks. We're a rock farm now. Free giant stump to a loving home. Just come and take it. This farm doesn't even have a fridge. Grandpa didn't didn't have a fridge apparently. He just never felt like buying one. You got a bunch of grapes from the tree in the spring at the beginning of the game. Good luck with that. You can't you can't put them anywhere. Want to enter the cooking festival in the first month? Well, good luck with that, because you don't have, there's no kitchen, you can't make anything. You know what else the farm doesn't have? Anything. It doesn't have anything. There's no chickens, they all ran away or died. There's no cows either. Or is there? <coughs> yes, just about the only good thing this farm has is a cow suit. I'm the cow. <coughs> I'll cook myself and submit it to the cooking contest. How about that? So yeah, Gramps, thanks for the farm. I uh, really appreciate everything everything you left me. All right, thanks. And uh, uh, get better, get well soon. I mean, rest in peace. Right. You know, 
W whichever. Other than a couple small changes here and there, the farming in this Story of Seasons remake is pretty much the same as in the old game, but that's not a bad thing as far as I'm concerned. It's nowhere near as advanced as something like Stardew Valley is now, but it still holds up and the progression flows well. You always have something to work towards, whether that's upgrading your tools, upgrading your chicken coop or barn, getting a mayonnaise maker for your eggs, stuff like that. I personally really like the farming, but if you happen to find it tedious, you could always hire some help. By help, I mean the harvest sprites or nature sprites in this version, and by hire, I mean not that. A completely different word, perhaps. Once you befriend them, and that is not hard to do, by the way, they absolutely love almost anything that you give them, you can start asking them to help you complete your work. I was gonna say that they don't mind working for you, but having played it again, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure, actually. They're constantly taking naps and playing music, and they even say stuff like, personally, I'd rather have a tea party instead of going to work. Uh, they're a little bit obsessed with tea parties, by the way. They're like some kind of weird hive mind. They all say the same thing. So I feel a bit bad, but I also don't. I mean, I said sorry at church. I'm totally forgiven. My sins have been wiped clean. And besides, I gave them a grape. What, what more do they want? Before I played Friends of Mineral Town, I played the older Game Boy version. I really liked this one too, but it was only farming. You could buy seeds and things from shops in the town, but you couldn't really talk with anyone. It was just a straight up farming sim. I became a big fan after Friends of Mineral Town because it also had an entire town full of people to meet. And you could even date and get married. I don't think that's all that novel of a concept in video games anymore, but back then that freaking blew my mind. And the social simulation stuff is where this game really shines. I mean, there's a reason it was called Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town and not Harvest Moon Crappy Grandpa Farm. I may not have gotten much action growing up, but little did all the people in my school know, I was thrice married and with child. <laughs> We all lived in the same little town, too, and they still never figured it out. I had a very complicated secret life going on behind the scenes in band class. Okay, I guess I should clarify, I had three wives until I, uh, accidentally deleted one of them. Rest in peace to my first love, Ellie, and our newborn child, Bumdo, or whatever his name was. I'd give anything to go back in time to save you, especially one of my other wives, Popery. I would definitely give up Popery. She's kinda dumb. She seems cute at first, but once you lock it down, you quickly realize that there's just not a whole lot going on up there. I mean, she gives you mud balls as a gift during one of her heart events. Freaking mud balls! Balls made of mud! I found actual forum posts in the mid-2000s about it! I can't get rid of that mud ball Pompery gave me! Please help! Don't marry Popery. Once you seal it with a kiss, there's nothing you can do. There's no going back. There's no help for you. You're stuck with her! No! <laughs> Oh yeah, and also, no, for my dead wife and kid too. I kind of forgot what I was talking about there for a sec. And then there was Anne. Anne's cool. I miss her overalls though. Rest in peace overalls. That's the moral of the story. All the characters from the original game are back, although some have slight changes, like how Gray doesn't have his Uma hat anymore for some reason. Don't tell me you're some kind of Earth weirdo. Uh, what the heck is an Earth Weirdo? There's also two new characters, an aloof artist named Brandon who's obsessed with the sky, I think? And a girl who spends most of her time in the mountains named Jennifer. I was just opening my soul to the positive energies of Mother Nature. Hey, Gray, I think I found the Earth Weirdo! A lot of the returning characters have name changes, which is understandable given the different publisher and translator, but one name change that didn't happen is... Doctor. I just love that he's one of the six eligible bachelors, but he still doesn't get a name. And speaking of the Doctor, unlike almost every previous game in the series, including the original versions, you can gay! Which means me and the Doc can finally be together. Holy crap, this is the moment I've been waiting for! Actually, I don't want to. Me and the Doc have moved on since the Magical Melody video. I bring him herbs every day, and then he lets me try out his newest drugs, including a drug that doesn't quite fall within the realm of medicine. Medical care. Nice. It's a mutually beneficial, albeit strictly plutonic, relationship. Now, Cliff, on the other hand. Wanna get married? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why not? I decided to go with one of the bachelorettes. There's the previously mentioned Jennifer, Karen, whose parents own the convenience store, Anne, now Ran, who's the daughter of the guy who owns the inn, Ellie, the nurse, and my childhood favorite. Then there's Popery.
But I ended up going with Marie, the shy librarian girl, as chosen by my Twitch chat. And I'm totally fine with it because one, I never married her in the old game, and two, dang if she doesn't have a pretty crazy glow up. Maybe even the best one other than Rick. How is Rick hot now? I hate it. Just imagine this scenario. You meet some random guy for the first time ever and say, Hi, I'm a man in a cow suit. What's your name? And their response is, I like pretty much everyone in town except for Kai. I can't stand that no good bump. He drifts in like low tide in the summer, turns the town on its head, and then disappears whenever he pleases. Mom and Popery don't have so much as a single bad thing to say about Kai, but I'm not surprised seeing as how women seem to fight all over him. That's another thing I don't like about him. Nice to meet you too, I guess. I have no issues with Kai at all personally, but I do have an issue with Grey. Grey, for those not in the know, is the rival bachelor for Marie. She trusts him with proofreading the book that she's writing, but all she has to say to me is... Hello. Of course, if you're alright with me reading it, I'd love to help. I'd like to read it. Wonderful, I'll bring it to you later. Guys. I just don't want to tell you, I'm not very happy about this. The fact that he's hot just makes this worse. I look like a freaking goober. I look like a freaking goober in a cow suit. How can I compete with this? Look at him. He's handsome. He's cute and handsome at the same time. And I'm just over here in a cow suit. Stupid. Stupid. This game sucks. I want to be handsome. I don't even know what I look like. I don't even have a mouth. I'm just a little goober. Look at me. Look at me. I'm just a little goober. Look at that! I have nothing to offer! It's freaking... It's not working! It's not working! I'm very happy to say that overall, I am very, very pleased with the Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town remake. My only real big complaint is that the rival marriages have been taken out of the game, which is pretty, it's a pretty big deal actually. I, I don't know why that is, but you know, it, it, it's fine. It, it's not the end of the world. Other than that, it's a really faithful remake and it feels exactly like playing the old game, just with a fresh coat. Uh, new music and all that stuff, and a few other little new things added as well, which is cool. I have a hard time describing what it is that I like about Harvest Moon, uh, sometimes. It seems like it could be boring to some people, but I think I finally put it into words, at least sort of, so here we go, I'm gonna give it a try. One of the things that makes me happiest in life is having a really productive day. Getting a lot of things done, it just feels good. But every now and then I don't want to do anything productive, I just want to play video games and sit around on my butt, you know. You, you know how it goes. And playing a game like Harvest Moon and Story of seasons or even Stardew Valley, it tricks my brain into thinking that I'm doing something productive, even though I'm definitely not. I, I, th I think that's what it is. The end. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like button if you want to help me share this video around on YouTube. Why not watch another Harvest Moon video I did here, or you can check out the archive of the Twitch livestream of Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town here as well. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys on another video. Bye-bye.